Okay, this is a lot to talk about in a tiny shell. Hello there, this episode of Some Gadget Guy is brought to you by viewers like you. All the amazing folks who share content on social media and help us out with algorithms and the incredible generosity of my patrons at patreon.com slash some gadget guy. More info on those awesome nerds later in the video. Okay, what you're watching right now is my second try at reviewing this product. Asus sent this my way. It's the RT AX57 Go portable router. They sent this to me to take on a test drive and share some thoughts. I have a lot of thoughts but I had to rewrite this script a couple times. My first pass on this product was roughly 5,000 words long as I detailed and toured every aspect of this router. That's kind of too much. This video is going to be more of a review and less of a setup and feature tour video. I just kind of can't do both, but if you really want the second part of this, I might consider trying to put something a little rougher around the edges out on the Patreon. Initially, I kind of got a bit peeved with ASUS when they described the product, and then I looked up just AX57 and I saw a normal home or office router. Like, why use the same general naming for two products? Because I kind of expected this to be a cheaper portable accessory, like maybe those wireless memory card readers that work well-ish, but they're kind of limited. That's not what this is. This is a full-featured home consumer-grade router that just happens to be in a smaller shell and with a few less ports. It is a simplified product, but it's not a simple product. This little slab needs power. There's no built-in battery, and it's a little too thirsty to be run off of a phone's USB port, but it ran well on my favorite portable power banks. It's really nice to see the power requirements just printed right on the case. Nine volt, two amp, that's pretty easy to do these days. We get a USB three port for storage and for connecting your phone as a tethered hotspot. The port will charge your phone while you're using that data connection. There's a little reset button button, WAN, and LAN Ethernet ports. And then there's this one, uh, there's this one touch button. It's a little rocker switch. I was confused by this because I did not read the instructions. So I thought this was like a power switch to turn it on and off. And to be fair, out of the box, this switch is set to do nothing. So it took me a second to figure out what it was for. There are options for you to assign to this switch. And now I use it for our VPN when we're traveling. Then next to the switch, there's a little light that changes color based on the readiness and the connection. Et voila, it's a router that can almost fit in your pocket. In the box, we also get a power brick, a flat ethernet cable, and a little stand so that you could prop it up vertically with a soft case for travel. Now let's get this out of the way right up top. Asus makes a ton of claims about this router. All the claims I could test seem to perform how Asus describes them, or better. It's a full ASUS router. There is almost no compromise for using a smaller shell. It's not a light product. You could use it as your home router, or it could be a repeater. Or if you have other ASUS routers, you can use it as part of a mesh Wi-Fi system. Get one of those big, bad spider leg antenna routers, and then put a bunch of these around your home to flesh out any weak spots in your network. And then you can just throw it in a bag when you need to hit the road, use it as a portable router to support a family of gadgets. You can connect it to your phone and use that as a more robust phone hotspot, or you can switch it over to a wisp mode so you can add a protective layer, a barrier in between your devices and public Wi-Fi. It starts to sound really infomercially. Has this ever happened to your Wi-Fi? It does this, and this, and this, and that. It's corny, but taking it on two recent trips, it handles all of these features really well. It's not simple though. And the setup is as in-depth as setting up a proper router. Like I said, I did not read the instructions as closely as I should have, but I was trying to set this up on the road. And it's a bit more involved than I was expecting because yeah, I was expecting like a basic low level, you know, plug it in and go kind of a starter thing that kind of works. But starting with the phone app, you go through a setup process that that gets pretty deep. When we look at all these menus from my screenshots, I think it's just easier to navigate all the ins and outs from a larger display. It's a router and maybe I'm old like 
that, but I prefer the browser version better. Little things like operation mode. If I wanna switch from router to repeater or wisp mode, that's a link right at the top of the browser interface. It's a menu setting you have to dig through on the phone app a couple layers deep. So it was trickier to find that the first time I was setting this up in a hotel room. I would recommend buying this before a trip and taking a minute to set this up at home, and then you can get all of your family devices hooked up to this, and then you never really have to worry about it ever again. Because if you're like me, you know, the person who has to play IT department for the whole household, it's very encouraging. You know, now we get to the airport or we get to the hotel room and none of our gadgets have to individually sign on to public Wi-Fi. I take the time to fire up the router and then my wife's phone and laptop, my tablet phone and laptop, my daughter's tablet just go, hey, cool. We know that network and they're good to go. In those advanced operation modes, I added some wire guard keys so I can flick the little switch and then we can throw on a VPN. And if we don't have public Wi-Fi, I plug my phone in and everyone can piggyback on my cell phone connection. And then when I get back home to the gadget lab, this is such a handy little guest network device for my reviewing. I know this is not a core demographic ASUS is trying to reach, but I've been reviewing so many little mini PCs and laptops, it's a bit of extra peace of mind. I can go through the setup process, scan those systems for malware or any other funky behavior, and keep them completely isolated from the rest of my home network. Now we run a business grade router and I can create these other virtual networks to accomplish the same tasks, but I'm also a bit more of a hardware guy and I prefer completely segmenting that kind of use. And with this, I don't need to have a full-sized router semi-permanently installed to get that job done. So that's a totally unique use case. I'm not advocating that that's gonna be a common thing you do with it, but I flippin' love it. There's not really much I can knock here. This case design, twice now, I've accidentally clicked the reset button while detaching the USB. You just kinda have to learn that you hold it from the sides, not push back against the back panel. The carry pouch is kinda, uh? It's a two-segment fabric case, and the power brick doesn't really fit well in this. I think just one bigger pouch would have been nicer, at least easier to use. On the operation of the router itself, the signal strength won't compare to a full-size router with lots of antennas, but it's plenty strong for a small apartment. It has no issues connecting devices around our entire two-story condo. I've got good coverage all around our home, though it won't reach out to our parking lot. Considering the claims from ASUS, that's better performance than I was expecting. I mean, if we were to go on vacation with some relatives and our families had adjacent hotel rooms, we could hook everyone up on this little router. The only thing missing, and it's not really missing, but I wish ASUS had an optional battery designed for this shell. It does all this on about 20 watts, which is really cool. It ran great on my power banks, but it would be nice if we could stack this on top of a similar shaped battery. That way I don't have to hunt for a plug at the airport and it wouldn't be as floppy as the current mismatched power bank shapes that I have that then have to be plugged in with a cable. Like I said, this is the second pass that I've taken through this script and it's really hard not to gush. It's one of those accessories that you don't really think is super sexy on the surface, but then the more you use it, the cooler it gets. I've used and reviewed some fun networking gadgets in the past, like the aforementioned little wireless card readers or wireless hard drives. They can include some basic networking functionality, but I've also, I've needed to pack full-sized routers for work trips. This is better than any of the solutions I've used in the past. It's the mobile management that I really like. It's not a cheap product, but I think it's really well priced for how feature packed it is. The Swiss Army knife aspect of this, all the different ways that you can incorporate this into your family device strategy and your home network, even just for abbreviating the travel shenanigans. So like if you have a phone, you only have a phone, sure, I get it, this is gonna be overkill. Or a phone and a laptop, they can tether together easily. You could manage the VPN settings on an individual laptop. But when we're out with a collection of devices, it's so fast firing this up and everyone, everything gets online. As a quick tangent before we wrap this up, I think it's interesting that there's this move to try and enable better communication between a phone and a PC or a phone and a tablet. And we're gonna share a data connection and move files around and we end up with these halfway measures or 
apps that many of which are proprietary or locked to a specific manufacturer. Maybe instead we should be looking for something universal. There's a higher upfront cost here, but maybe hardware is the way to go. So I will of course leave some links down below where you can find more information on the RTAX 57 Go. Make sure you get the Go in there or else you'll get the desktop router. Hit the video description below if you wanna shop one of these bad boys for your family. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos across social media and helping us out with all of these terrible algorithms on platforms. And as I test products like these, the first folks who get to see my coverage are my amazing patrons. The folks over on patreon.com slash some gadget guy, a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart as they are, they're actively helping to keep the lights on here in the gadget lab. They're just a really awesome group of nerds. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me across the rest of the internet at some gadget guy, basically everywhere. But these days I'm trying to spend a bit more time on the Mastodons, a little less so on the Facebooks and the Instagrams and definitely not on the Twitters. And I will catch you all on the next review.